Okay, we're going to finish out uh, with a background and you can it's up to you if you want to put a background if you've put these items on um so that it looks like it's on a table source or something um some sort of surface and then a background behind it you got to find out what is going to be the most under your control okay and so going from gravity from here across um that may be actually the best route for us um to go all right so i'm gonna actually change uh where my gravity is going to be coming from and as you can see i put things right side up or upside down it doesn't matter as long as the end result um is actually what i need and want that to be so i'm going to go from top this way it's actually the side going sideways but i can go across with my brush strokes and in and out rather than having to move all of these at the same time and meet in one spot or go from the top and have to try and go in between all these which some of these areas may dry um, before each other and you need it to not dry in between trying to uh, get those brush strokes all in before you know to get the uh, flat wash to work so i actually have uh, quite a bit of paint here uh, you have to make sure you have enough okay and have um, some paper towel standing by and all that okay make sure your paint is mixed good that it's not um if you need it to be a lighter color you thin it out heavier color you just add more of your paint but you don't want it to be like thick and sludgy because that is too heavy and it will get uh, muddy and you can always do what we've done here with the flat wash like in um, the areas where the cube is is to do several uh, layers of the same thing okay which means i might have to mix more paint i need to make sure i have enough paint to cover that whole background and so i made a pencil line across okay and that's where i need to meet it all right plenty of paint here that you have to make sure that you use and i'm going to go along the edge and then pull across Get more paint, pull across, okay? Make sure you don't get your hand in <laughs> what you just painted, okay? And you really have to make sure that you understand where your paintbrush is at all times, okay? So now in this area, to go down and I, although I've gone down a bit there below where I normally would and I still have my paint almost dripping I still am working fast enough to help this paint along okay so here even if I put my paintbrush on an angle, I need to pull that straight across. Okay, I'm going to get more paint. And then down here again, be very careful not to get um, your arm or your hand into the wrong spot. Okay, getting more paint work working fairly quickly here okay and so i've gone partially along that edge okay again partially along the edge I'm just making sure of where my paintbrush is going and 
I see that up here in this area, I need to pick up some of the paint. It's puddled. Uh, too much. There's actually too much paint right there. And I'm not brushing over it all the time. I'm picking up. So I'm getting rid of some of the paint here at the end of the brush and picking up a little bit of it. Let me correct that little corner right there. And I need to then move on. You need to move fairly quickly with something like this. And again, I can see I'm probably going to end up with another little bit of a puddle. All right, make sure you don't get your arm into the wrong spot and um, touching. Okay. More paint coming across, more paint. I still want to make sure that I can keep going across. Now I need to um, subtract some of the puddle that's going on here. So I kind of had to backtrack a little bit. All right, keep going. Drawing out a little bit more of that shape to define it. And going across again, the, the paint is flowing down in this direction. got a lead edge over here and then I'm gonna keep painting along it and then I think I can come back up here and meet this little edge here and keep coming across until I'm completely done. All right, let's look for the little puddles that have um, a bit too much paint, a little bit right here and down here. Okay, along some of these edges, right in here where um, my staples are, you might encounter that sort of thing. A little bit too much right there at the end it's kind of soaking it up and going backwards okay and then I'm going to go ahead and allow that to dry and that should be it if I wanted to deepen that color I'm gonna add more um, or mix up some more of this paint and then do another um, across I might even turn this whole thing around and go the other way. But you can see that I was able to go keep going across and going more in and then out and taking my brush um, along the edges and uh, sometimes flipping it a little bit, especially in some of these smaller areas, okay? This is the finished piece. I've um, darkened up these shadows in here, again with a little bit of the brownish color to differentiate. And by putting a background, it actually makes these objects pop forward. You don't always need that kind of thing, but when you are doing a painting, 
with objects that have um, something you want to portray volume with, having a bit of contrast, plus um, the different colors to, sh to emulate the idea of light on an object, that will make it look more realistic.